his, his father worked at the Alco. Like I say, most of the people that lived here, they either worked at the Alco or GE, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of my brothers, too. Af before and after the service in World War II, they uh, worked at the post office, uh, GE, mm -hmm. in different places around here, you know. Mm -hmm. One was a fireman also, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we had the floods, my brother used to come down and empty our basement. <laughs> and how, uh, were the floods something that happened a lot? Or? Uh, we had quite a few floods, mm -hmm. but never in the house that I know of downstairs. But probably when I was very, very young, I think my mother said it was in the house about that high at one time. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time in 2011 that it came three feet into the house downstairs. Mm -hmm. But I... You know, my husband always used to say, uh, you should move your washer and dryer downstairs. And I said, no, no, I want it right here. <laughs> and, and I'm glad I never moved it, you know. In mm -hmm. fact, um, the, uh, one of the reporters from Channel 6 came here mm -hmm. uh, after the water receded in 2011. And I told them that I always lived up here and... Downstairs, I just kept like a little apartment when my boys would come home and they could use that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, she moved upstairs, you know. And I said, well, I, I really lived up here before the flood. Because yeah. you know? the flood <laughs> happened on August 28th, 2011. Mm -hmm. And we had to evacuate. So I went to my daughter who lives uh, near uh, the hospital, Ellis Hospital. So I only had to stay there a couple of days in September 1st or 2nd. I was able to come back. Mm -hmm. But I never shut the uh, power off or anything. My electrician said, leave it on and just shut the downstairs. So I was able to come upstairs, and my daughter and her friends were taking all the mud out. You know, mm -hmm. it would, mm -hmm. She wouldn't let me go down. She said, you can break your neck. It's so slippery, you know. Mm -hmm. So... I never had flood insurance for 80 years, eight, mm -hmm. more than 80 years. Mm -hmm. And then they had this item in the paper about the Gilboa Dam, mm -hmm. that it, if it burst, it would be up to State Street, the river. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, maybe I better get it. So five years before the big flood, I got insurance. Mm -hmm. And the last year, just before the flood, people were saying, you never had it in your house. You know, why pay 900 dollars for insurance I'm thinking and I'm saying well, I don't know I better get it so thank God I did, you did yeah. because it paid for it re mm -hmm. finishing everything downstairs even though I lost all the stuff in it you know mm -hmm. the furniture that I had and all was lost you know mm -hmm. but they got new floors and new walls and you know, they saved the woodwork so it was able to be put back, you know. Mm. So everything, you know. It's not good. like it was the old. My my youngest son, son said, nah, I don't know, downstairs still doesn't doesn't look like the old downstairs, you know. Because he, he's one kid and my daughter, the two of them, they like old stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it must now, have taken a long time to get all that back together down there. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. it took, that was in, they started that in September 2011, and it took, oh, it took about four or five months to do everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I live up on, I live on the corner of North College and Green Street, just a few houses down from the church, what used to be the church there, Holy Cross. Oh, yeah. On North College Street. You're so. on 38? 38, yeah. You're closer to Union, though, aren't you? Yeah, it's kind of halfway. It's on the corner of Green. Green and North College. On the corner of Green and... Uh, North College. Green? Green and, and College. Yeah. The big house, that big Brick. brown? Brown, yes. Yeah. It's a big brown house. Yeah. Is yeah. that where you live? Yeah. yeah. You own that house? I do. There's a lot of work to do in it. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. the people who lived there yeah. uh, were, uh, were the broom factory 
was on Front Street. Uh, the people who uh, lived in f the house in front of the broom factory, they, they, I don't know whether they worked there or what, but they had something to do with the broom factory. Mm -hmm. Gutowski was their name. Mm -hmm. And my mother was very friendly with them. You know, they had them for godparents and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, let's see, my mind, sometimes I start thinking and then I forget what I'm going to say. Uh, um, it was something about the did they live in that house? They were connected to the broom factory. Did they yeah. live in live in the house in my house in thirty eight or? Oh yeah, and yeah. their uh, daughter got married to uh, I can't think of his name, but he was a coach at Union College. Mm -hmm. Her name was Sabina, and his his name was Arthur. Okay. But I can't think of his name, his last name. Mm -hmm. But she lived there. Oh, they okay. lived there, and when they lived there, they took care of that house. Yeah. It was well taken care of, yeah. so I don't know who had it after that. We bought it from people named Gavin, was their That's last name? That's a big house. It is, and when we bought it, um, it there was people living in it when we bought it, but it was not. Yeah. yeah. So we're slowly, you know. It's just like that house on the corner here mm -hmm. uh, of North Street. Mm -hmm. Right on the corner on this the side. Brick one? Yeah, it's a yeah. nice brick house. Yeah. Well, you should have seen that house before Mr. Schaefer uh, renovated it. Mm -hmm. It was it was horrible. The people who lived there, they were Keeler. The name mm -hmm. was Keeler. And they didn't do anything. They didn't even shovel their walk or anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I understand is he lives there with his wife, and they had one son, and they had his mother lived there, and she had, like, one room there, and she lived in that one room. And, and when uh, this fella, uh, Axel, he used to own the Burnt Hills uh, hardware store, mm -hmm. and he was riding by the that house, with his fiance, and she liked old things, and the house was dilapidated. Picture, it's not like it is yeah. now. So he, she said, "Stop!" She said, "She said I want that house," and he said, "Okay, I'll go see if they would sell it, even though it was dilapidated." She loved that house, something about it, you know. So he rings the doorbell, and this lady said, "Oh, I would love to sell it." but I know my husband wouldn't sell it. So uh, after the lady who lived there, her husband died and her son died. And then uh, uh, the, she called up this guy, Axel, who owned the hardware store and says, uh, you, you wanted this house years ago. Now my husband's gone, my son's gone, and I would love to sell it. So he said, oh, that's wonderful. And when he went there, he said, I'm not going to buy this house now. It's too many years later, you know. But when he got there, he said, I, I'm thrilled. I'll buy it. He said, I don't know why I said that, but I did. <laughs> so he told his fiance, and he had Mr. Schaefer go through it all. In fact, there was a tile missing, this uh, Delft tile around the f fireplace. He, he found a duplicate and mm -hmm. replaced that. And this Mr. Schaefer, he was a wonderful builder. And so uh, when, he was re when it was ready, the house was ready, his wife was dying from cancer. Oh, mm -hmm. So he, he still moved there after she died. And he, I remember when he invited us to go there one Christmas Eve, he was all dressed up, you know, with tie and everything. And he had this hot cider and everything. And he lit his Christmas tree with candles, which he only lit once a year because dangerous, you know. Mm -hmm. Put candles on it and had this beautiful chandelier and everything. He showed us through the house and all. And he had like a memorial for his wife right at the entrance because yeah. his wife never lived there and she's the and one she that wanted. wanted the house. It was sad, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. And I remember 
uh, I took pictures of that house in the back of it and the front of it. And I said, I'd love to paint that house, you know. So I did the front of the house, but there was nothing. It was just windows and like mm -hmm. that. But the back had the the, the uh, arched uh, chimneys, you know, with yeah. the brick like that. And they also had the beehive oven in the back and all. And it had um, uh, the windows were more character to them and all. So I, I painted that picture like a 14 by 18 or something. And uh, I gave it to Axel. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I'd love to pay you for it. I said, no. I said, that's a present for you. So he always had it in his house, you know. And then when uh, he, he died and his nephew was selling the house, uh, the nephew knew that I, I gave that picture, mm -hmm. so he gave it back to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And then a young couple bought that house uh, after Axel died, and they had one little girl, I remember. She was a toddler. And uh, uh, I said, gee, you know, they loved that house just like Axel did. And I said, I can't keep this picture, you know. Mm -hmm. So I... I told them, I asked them if they would like this picture, and they said yes. And they sent me this huge bouquet of flowers, you know. <laughs> and and soon after, he was transferred to Missouri or something. And uh, he, they wanted to give me the picture back, and I said no. And they were so happy because they said, we can't take the house with us, but we can take the picture, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that... That man Axel was so such a wonderful guy. He loved that house. He mm -hmm. really did, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was so sad that his wife never lived there, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I've never been in that house, but I, I've heard that it's really nice. Well, she fun. had it at the walkabout once, but she said some of the people were very... Uh, rude when it came to taking care of her antiques mm -hmm. and she had a lot of antiques there in fact mm -hmm. she has classes at the college on old furniture and colonial times mm -hmm. she just finished five weeks at the maybe house oh, okay. and uh she had uh five weeks of uh my one of my good friends went to it and he said it was wonderful mm -hmm. She 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 knows so much about. What's her uh, name again? Her name is uh, 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 also Marilyn Sassy. Sassy. Yeah. S A S S I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she she knows a lot about stuff, mm -hmm. and she used to work for museums and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So she's very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. One of my friends took a lot of classes there about old houses and all, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Not that I can think of, unless you can think of anything else about the neighborhood, growing up in the neighborhood, or <laughs> stories, or... But I think you've told us a lot, though, also. Huh? So I think you've also told us a lot, so... Um, well, I try to tell you some of the stuff that I already told Sylvie, too. Yeah. You know, the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. So... What was that building you went to St. <clears throat> next? The building across the street from St. Mary's, it's like a big school. Is that a school? Um, right on Irving Street. Yeah, on Irving Street. Well, you know, years ago somebody was supposed to buy it and make apartments. Right. It, nobody ever did, and it's it's bad now. Yeah, really. I saw that. The whole, there's really a hole bad. in the roof. It's bad because... Even people were living there, like homeless people and oh, all. Yeah. yeah, it's really bad. Because I lived on University Place. Oh, did you? And I used to take my dog for a walk in the cemetery. Oh, and yeah. And so I yeah. used to go b b by that way all the yeah. time. And I used to look at the, both of the church yeah. and the rectory. And the church and the rectory are still in very yeah. good shape. Yeah. But that one building has a big hole in the roof now, a huge hole. So it's so. Oh that, yeah, the school is. It's, yeah, the it's school's bad. Yeah, it's that's gonna probably come down at some yeah, point. Yeah, right. But, My know. husband grew up on Irving Street. Uh huh. Right oh, he did. There. Yeah, right next to the church. Yeah. 
Because that was a Polish church, and that whole area, this, that part of the cemetery is mostly yeah. Polish in there, too. Well, um, a lot of Polish in there. St. Mary's Cemetery is up on McClellan Street. On McClellan? McClellan. Yeah, yeah, right. But uh, uh, Vail Cemetery, yeah, the kids used to go sliding on cardboards down there, my, my mm. husband used to tell me, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> they weren't afraid of the cemetery. <laughs> no, they weren't afraid. Yeah. No. That was, that so you was got good. enough. Yeah. I think that yeah. was very interesting. Yeah. I think that was good. Okay. Want me to unplug that? Yeah, so let's, let's, let's okay. do the, yeah.